And today the Eurocup moves to Denmark, to Herning in the centre of Jutland. The weather forecasters say it's going to be hot, 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 so there should be a good crowd to see competitors from eight countries do battle in the three Eurocup classes, which are the mini pullers, the 4.4 tonne modifieds, and the first we'll see, the 3.4 tonne superstocks. If you're new to the sport, the name of the game is to pull a sledge as far as possible down a 100 metre track. If you cross the 100 metre line, you've made a full pull and qualify for a pull-off final. Now, to make things harder, a weight box through a series of gears and pulleys is moved from the back of the sledge to the front, and when it gets there, it's like trying to pull Mount Everest. These are the drivers at the pre-event information meeting where they're told which sledges will be used for which events and anything else which may be appropriate. This is a Belgium sledge which will be used for the Eurocup events and is reckoned to be one of the best in the business. Right, this is the current points table in the 3.4 tonne Superstocks. Mike Calbits and Pieces is doing everything right to retain the title, but Dear Addiction and Rowdy haven't given up the chase yet. So, let's get on with the pulling, and the first of the 17 competitors is already in the arena, Bjarne Nielsen and Spetten. When the officials who measure the distance are ready, they give the green light to second flagman Mick Hollin, and when it's safe to run, he will also give the green to first flagman Olaf Dienerson. And then it's all systems go, and Bjarne could ease forward on the throttle of his Ford 79-10. Betten has won seven Danish championships, four in this class, and is currently second in the national competition. So he's doing well. Our camera's at the 95 metre mark, so Bjarne's pull is in the high 80s. He comes from Roskilde near Copenhagen on the island of Schellen, and 87.88 is the distance for Spetten. Now this is Flintstone, owned by Gert Jakobsen, but driven today by 43-year-old Torben Larsen. It's the same type of Ford as the better-known Hurricane from Holland. And that's Gert in the white T-shirt just going over to check that everything's OK. And if you haven't got ear protectors, then fingers are the next best thing, although it's the minis and modifieds who usually make the most noise. Now watch the tyres. They get them spinning really fast to pull by friction on top of the surface and not with deep treads digging into the ground. They cut off most of the tread and there are very few sets of tyres that are the same. Well, this set has taken Flintstone to 89.55, nearly two metres ahead of Spetten. But with the big boys still to pull, I don't think there'll be too much yabba-dabba doing in the Flintstone camp. On to Henrik Iverson and Hobo, which he finished building at midnight last night, so this is its maiden run. He comes from the village of Lind, which is just outside of Herning, so at least he didn't have a long drive to get here. And Henrik should be pleased with that. When you're making your first pull, you don't push too hard. You need to get to know your machine and its capabilities. The last thing you want is to blow a turbo or something else like that. 83.48 for Hobo. This is a two-day event with the other EuroCup classes tomorrow. It's just before six in the evening, so a late start, but that helps those who have a long way to come. And that's smart, isn't it? They've come with their own mobile grandstand. They can see 41-year-old Christian Fries backing heavy fuel into position. He's been pulling for 10 years, so he's got plenty of experience, and he's currently seventh in the Danish Championships. And there's someone else with a grandstand position. But Daddy underneath will be hot. It's still over 30 degrees, even though it's clouded over now. And a breeze is making life a little unpleasant for the camera. <laughs> so heavy fuel is on its way. But not a winner today. The farmer from Howells in southern Jutland is just short of 80 metres. 79.88 for Christian Freeze and heavy fuel. All eyes and ice creams are pointed to the start now, where Miss Fergie is ready and waiting. Gets its name not from the princess, but from its make. It's the only Massey Ferguson we'll be seeing today. Jan Falkman, a 36-year-old mechanic, is the man behind the wheel. He steered it to second place in both the 3.4 and 4.4 tonne classes here in Denmark last year. And that was a good one. Definitely the longest pull so far from Miss Fergie. 97.61 is the distance. So Jan Falkman from Haldrup on the island of Shelland 
just under two and a half metres short of a full pull. The Danish tractors are not only pulling for Eurocup points, but also points in the Danish Championships. Scroll to you too, sir. Now this is the first time we've seen a Zeta tractor this year. It comes from the Czech Republic, goes under the name of Eurostar. Jens Rabeck is the driver and he tells me that he's also got a 250cc Suzuki that he takes motocrossing when he has the time. Well, he hasn't crossed the 100 metre line this time. The distance for Eurostar, 91.27, which gives Jens third place behind Miss Fergie and Spetten. But that is likely to change because the last of the Danish competitors is the next of Paul and he happens to be the reigning European champion. Niels Damgård and Blue Power. Leading in Denmark, but he's had a troubled year in the Euro Cup. Nothing's gone right for him. He's had a clutch on order from America that should have arrived at Easter, but still hasn't found his way to his workshop at Oland, which is near here. Let's see if his luck's changed now. No, he's still suffering, still down on power, but his American supplier has said that the clutch is on its way, so he has that to look forward to. 93.68 for Blue Power. And believe it or not, one or two drops of rain has prompted the organisers to unpack the plastic track covers, just to be on the safe side. Out from Germany, the little red and bad rooster with Hans-Peter Stratman from near Dusseldorf preparing himself. That's his brother Martin who tells me they've made some changes since their last pull in Sotram to try and get even more revs from their international 946, which has the smallest engine in this class. Oh, water, water everywhere. It's back to the drawing board for the Stratman brothers. And Hans has had better days than this. Let's see it again in slow motion. They drove 700 kilometers, got here about an hour ago, and now they can load up and go home. 88.27 for the rooster. And you're a bit late with the plastic covers, lads. All the water's on the track. Right, now we're ready for the next competitor, Mega Power from Finland. Miko Pera, the 1992 4.4 tonne European champion from Ulistaro in the middle of Finland. <laughs> and he's showing that once you get airborne, he can go all the way. That was a really impressive full pull from the Finn. The crowd showing their appreciation. And when you come all the way from Finland, it's nice to produce a pull where everything works just right. He doesn't usually show much emotion, but there's a hint of a smile. Oh, and even a thumbs up to uh, Pekka Herlevy's family, who are here by the railings to cheer him on. And both of Herlevy's Falmets, Caesar and Delta Power, have reached the pull-off, along with Magkal Bits and Pieces, the EuroCup leader. But they're all in with a chance. Nick Holland and Olaf Dienerson agreeing on the sledge settings for the pull-off. And then it's up to the sledge operators to add the extra weight that they think is necessary. Well, that should slow them down a bit. In 1993, the Danish Tractor Pulling Association hosted the European Championships here at Herning, which was a great success. And for the last two years, they've made a round of the Euro Cup, the highlight of their year. It takes a lot of money and a long time to prepare, so it's nice when the weather's kind and things go well. This is Thomas Patterson from Sweden, hoping things go well for him. He's had three third places and he's second in the point standings at the moment. What's Deer Addiction going to do? Well, our camera's at the 95 metre mark and that is a pretty decent pull for Thomas. 91.2, so the 1994 Swedish champion sets the standard the others have to beat. <laughs> and where Jörki Makapataya is, Caesar is not far behind. Both of Pekka Herlevy's two daughters, Partanen and Johanna, waiting and watching to see if Dad can get on the winner's rostrum. Caesar, the 1993 4.4 European champion. Steam up, and Caesar's away. Oh, a rifle crack, the cowling comes adrift. Pekka says, how about that then? And further convulsions from the stricken track to loosen just about every bit of the other bodywork. He looks down and laughs, so that's just about all you can do in a situation like that. Then he gets down to survey the damage, hoping for the best, but fearing the worst. Jörg, he can see that Caesar won't pull again this weekend. He'll be busy for a few days and nights when he gets back home. 
New engine blocks don't come that cheap and there's more oil there than in a Texas oil field. 40.48 is somewhat irrelevant. At least there's one happy man with a couple of heavy souvenirs from Caesar. As we move on to the next to pull, JBJ Express from Great Britain, owned by Peter Clark with his son Stephen in the saddle. He's 27 in 10 days time, clipping on and coupling up. He won the Euro Cup in 1993, was second last year, but this year has been a disappointment. He's only managed nine points from two starts. He missed Sotram as it clashed with the pull in England. And that is not going to threaten the leader. 82.58 for the farmer from Buckingham, who lost all the pressure over the last few metres. Forward, ho! <laughs> they don't do things by half in Denmark. The scoop he's sitting on is full of beer and soft drinks, fresh supplies for the refreshment stall. And now it's the turn of Rowdy with Hans Schweiger from Germany. He, his wife and two others have equal shares in the tractor, which has dominated the German superstock classes for the past four years. And he's done pretty well in Europe as well. But this is not one of the pools he'll want to remember. He's either got technical problems or he's chosen the wrong gearing. And shakes his head, and there's the reason why. 77.8 for Rowdy. And he's still puzzled by what went wrong. No, he won't be the first today, but this man could be. Willem Wellhausen and Magkal Bits and Pieces. First at Bernay in France. First at Wallaby Flavor in Holland. First at Sotram in Germany. And a top three finish today, and the Euro Cup is his for the second successive year. Oh, going well. Looking like Darth Vader in his helmet. Up goes the arm. He knows it's a good run, and that should clinch him the cup. He makes nearly all the parts himself in his workshop, so retaining the cup must be even more satisfying. 88.52 into second place for Magkal Bits and Pieces. And that is one happy man with just three to run. And this is Running Deer, the second of Peter Clark's tractors, driven by Jeff Ashcroft, whose wife is expecting their first child just before the European Championships in Sweden. He's driving her over all the bumpy roads he knows to speed up the berth, but it hasn't worked yet. Let's see if he can speed down the track. Eighty-three point six nine and third place for running deer. You can put your spanners away, Jeff. I guess it's cuddly toys for you for a while in the future. In four days' time, it's his birthday, so third place today will be a nice way for the 29-year-old journalist from Brackley in Northamptonshire to celebrate. So Deer Addiction, which was the first to pull, is still in the lead with 91.2 metres. Willem Welthausen and his co-driver Leonard Griffian watching proceedings to see if they can retain their second spot. And next into the arena is Pekka Hurlevy's other Valmet, Delta Power. They were fourth in Sotram last time out, which was their best placing in this competition so far. He certainly looks determined. And Delta Power is doing a good job. A very good job. It's difficult to tell from this angle, but he's well over the 90 metre mark. Hecker knows it's a good pull. His wife Anna's on the left, and it's Mulperi, Parton and Johanna, not sure themselves of the distance, waiting for the score to be shown. He needs some good fortune after what happened to Caesar. 94.2 is the distance for Delta Power. Yes, Becca, you're in the lead. All of three metres better than Deer Addiction. And there's just one to run. Your fellow Finn, Miko Pera, with Mega Power. I don't know how they manage it, but they all squeeze into the cab of his lorry when they come to lend the support. Still, it's nice to have your family along to share in the good times. And if Mega Power can also get on the winner's rostrum, there would really be some celebrating tonight in the Valmont camp, I can assure you of that. 
as Miko Pera starts his pull. High in the air, it sounds like there's a woodpecker trying to get out of his engine. But he comes to rest well short of the 90 meter mark, so we won't have a Valmet double today. 86.06, so Pekka Herlevy turns disaster into triumph and takes his first well-deserved Euro Cup win. He gets a new hat. And someone in the audience gets a nice souvenir as we look at the official result. Magcal Bits and Pieces is relegated to third place and you won't often find Rowdy so low in the finishing order. Well, with one round to go and the best four results to count, Magcal Bits and Pieces can't be caught, but there's all to pull for in the minor placings. Right, we'll take a break. More spectacular EuroCup action is still to come. Welcome back to Herning in Denmark and more exciting EuroCup tractor pulling action. Now, before we start day two, let's have a quick cup of tea and see two other winners and a loser from Saturday's action. Fox on home ground gave the crowd plenty to cheer when the Larsen brothers came home almost seven meters ahead of the European champion Desperate Dan to win the 3.4 ton modified. Black Power rounded off a busy day by taking third place in the same class after earlier winning the 2.4 tons. But for Reddy Anderson and Ferdinand it was a day he'll want to forget. After nearly 85 metres on the first qualifying run, he was looking for a full pull, but all he found was trouble. Look at this. And that was thank you and good night for Ferdinand. His right front wheel axle has seen better days. And René, well, he throws a little tantrum and his helmet and says everything else is broken, why not the helmet as well? The safety line's ripped out, so he's got a few hours welding in front of him. See, he cuts the power, drops like a stone, snapping his front wheel. Bang! And then the sledge boots him from behind, uncoupling the chain and pulling out his safety line. And all that's left is to be towed back to the trailer and begin the repairs. And as darkness fell, two full pulls ensured victory to Snoopy from Great Britain in the 5.4 ton modified. Kevin Whittingham firing on all cylinders. Now, on with day two, where it's hotter than ever, and it's time for the minis. So let's remind ourselves of the points table. Simply Irresistible has a slight advantage over Mini Breaker, but Ghostbuster is not pulling today, so Joker could well jump into contention. There are even more spectators here today than yesterday, enjoying the lovely weather. And in the qualifying round of the ten competitors, Ghost broke at the start, but the other nine had full pulls. So the pull-off is between these Minis. There's five from Denmark, two from Holland and one each from Norway and Germany. And this is the sledge they'll be using in the pull-off. It comes from Sweden and it's called Cool Runnings, although the temperature is over 35 degrees Celsius and that's hardly likely. Here's our first to run. Gators from Denmark, who's twice been Danish champion. He was very disappointed when his ring and pin broke in Sotram and he couldn't come out for the pull-off but he's made it this time. That's a Chevy 454. 27-year-old Torben Hansen is the man behind the wheel. He comes from Sakroga, which is quite close to Herning, and he's an electrician by trade. Mick Hollin, just checking and getting this round of the minis underway. Full, full with the throttle, always flicks his visor down, which is very advisable. There's lots of loose stones on the surface of this track, which get propelled in all directions by these big rear wheels. And that was a snappy little run from Gators. I'm sure Torben will be happy with it. The crowd showing their appreciation. 76.79 is the mark to beat. And I hope that her lotion's got a high sun factor protection, or she'll be as red as a beetroot by the end of the day. There's virtually no breeze to help you cool down. Now, here's another day. 31-year-old Jens Sorensen from Widerbeck, 
This is Heavy Chevy, which won him the Danish title in 94. He's ahead again this year, only five points in front of Gators though. Oh, and there's a lot of smoke coming from his Chevy, which is bad news. He looks down, he's concerned, he's out of steam, and he stops around about the 75 meter mark. 75.28, second to Gators. And the oil dripping from his Chevy 510 tells its own story. The latest cool Paris fashion, which needs a solid base to rest it on. And here's a solid machine. Joker from Germany. Ettenscheiss outside of Stuttgart, to be more precise. Thomas Zimmermann is the young man in the cage, and that's Manfred, his father, giving a helping hand. He eases forward on the throttle of his Arias V8, and the reigning EuroCup holder is on his way. Now, will the Joker have the last laugh today? He's past Gators, our camera's at the 95 metre mark. So Thomas is round about 90 metres. He's won the German Championships three years in a row and he's doing well again this year. 91.01, so Joker takes the lead and the pressure is on with six to pull. Now from Norway, it's Karl Sofersengen and Mini Breaker. He won in Sotrum. Can he repeat that performance today? If he does, it'll take him one step nearer his goal, which is to win both the Euro Cup and the European Championships in Sweden in September. Problems there with the sledge in this heat. And of course, if you're planning a holiday in southern Sweden in September, come along and experience tractor pulling at first hand. You'll love it. And you'll be joined by fans from all over Europe. Right, Mini Breakers ready and rolling. His Keith Black 572 Stage 7 is pumping out the power, and when he gets going, two wheels is all he needs. Oh, this is a long one from the only Mini Puller in Norway. 94.92, Karl Sofersengen takes the lead. Moving it into forward. And pulling smartly away. And as the earth is so dry, thousands of tiny particles are thrown in the air and your eyes if you're unlucky, like Mick Hollin here, the second flagman from the north of England. And I can tell you that that and the combination of the high octane fuel from the exhaust stacks really makes your eyes water. Better put your glasses on right or you won't be able to see straight. So, Carl seems happy enough and he gets a big round of applause from the crowd. No guts, no glory. That's the motto of Simply Irresistible from Holland, which is jointly owned by Egbert Dross, Jacko Hoytland, and today's driver, Bert Dijkstra. He tells me they left their weather computer behind, which takes altitude, humidity, and temperature into account, and decides how much fuel to feed their Keith Black engine. In these conditions, they could regret it. Yes, this is a disappointing run for the European champions. They are well below the 90 meter mark. 86.84, so Simply Irresistible is only third today. And when it's hot, keep cool. And here's one young man who needs to keep a cool head. Gert Dingering from Holland with Lambada the fourth. It's his first year behind the wheel and he's currently second in the Dutch Championships behind his father, Willem, in Lambada the third. Now can Gert mix it with the big boys? Going well, and all of a sudden, his Chevy 572 dies on him. So we won't be having a winner from Holland today. 75.65 for the 17-year-old student from Zwolle. Free aerial view of proceedings, or else he's probably trying to get in without paying. Just three more to run now. They're all from Denmark, and here's the first. Road runner with Kenneth Dale. And he's also the chairman of the Danish Pulling Association, so he's also busy organising today's event. There's always got to be a place for pulling, though. Oh, but you won't get very far if your right wheel locks up. 39.12 metres for Roadrunner. Also, always time for a quick telephone call. There are five and a half million people in Denmark, and a large proportion of them have mobiles. 
He was probably trying to find out what went wrong with Roadrunner. Well, I can tell you, he locked his differential. So now there's just two to go. And this is Carl Peterson and Hunting Star the second. Powered by a 14-cylinder Alvis Star motor that normally sits in a whirlwind helicopter. But the weight too much for him and he lands well behind heavy Chevy. And the distance, 63.64 for Hunting Star. This is Carl's first season with this many. He upgraded his previous one, which had a nine-cylinder star motor. That's one of the Joker team keeping an eye on the last to run. And that's Carl Sofas, who looks to be already celebrating with a soft drink. Only Joker has managed to break the 90-meter mark and get close to him. So Mini Breakers 94.92 should be good enough, but who knows? This is Discovery trying his best. Shaking and rolling along. And Soren Lauritsen shuts it off about the 60 meter mark. 60.41 for Discovery, so the full result looks like this. And that was a convincing win for Mini Breaker over his two closest rivals for the title. And it's all changed at the top of the points table. Mini Breaker now takes a four point lead into the final round at Meerkirk. Time for a break, but we'll be back with the Mighty Modifieds. Welcome back to Herning in Denmark, where the heat goes on and the queues at the drink stand get longer. And there are many people who'd like to lay under this watering machine, which is trying to dampen things down a bit. And whilst it goes on its merry way, let's see the current EuroCup point standings for the 4.4 tonne Modifieds. Green Spirit the fourth has done everything right. Peter Direct has won three out of three and his hands are almost on the cup. Well, I guess that reigning champion Fox will have something to say about that here on home ground in Herning. Of the 11 competitors for today's event, two are from Great Britain, six are from Denmark, with one each from Holland, Sweden and Belgium. And it's Terminator who we're going to see first. Steph de Hoof backing his three Rolls-Royce Meteor tank engines into position. He's been Belgium 4.4 tonne champion for the last four years. And about a year ago, he bought a farm in France, just over the border. Well, I hope he had a good harvest. Let's see if he can reap a few points today. And not a good start. You really have to get those back wheels turning as fast and as quickly as possible to get a lot of early speed. And it's that that can give you those precious few extra meters when the weight box reaches the front of the sledge. And Terminator could have used them here. 94.6 for Terminator and Steph de Hoof. The track staff in their Valmet tractors doing a good job keeping the track raked and rolled and delays to a minimum. Interesting. My holiday souvenir t-shirt said no comment. As we move swiftly on to the next to pull, and that is Big Mama, owned and driven by Sorendale from not far away from here at Bilsum. He's currently third in the Danish championships in this his first year in pulling. Well, if others can bring their mobile phones, why not knitting as well? And it would look like she's on automatic pilot. So Soren eases forward on the throttle to his DAF 1160 engine, which he acquired from a lorry. But Big Mama can't manage a full pull today. He or she'll have to settle for 84.83 meters. Well, that's another way of cooling down, I suppose. This hot weather, not good for the tractors, though. They need masses of oxygen for their motors, and as the temperature rises, the air expands, and there's less oxygen, and that is bad news for this 1,500 horsepower Packard motor, which Soren Nielsen liberated from a 1943 torpedo boat. Well, there are no mountains in Denmark, but on his father's farm, there's a big hill called Bassa Bjell, Bassa Mountain, and Bassa is named after that. Let's see if Bassa can climb the 100-meter mountain. Oh, I thought he was going to do it there, but those last elusive few meters were just too much. 93.71 for Bassa. 
Erling Henriksen is next into the arena with this splendid machine called Noosa, which is the Danish equivalent of Snoopy. Powered by another lorry engine, this time a 1,000 horsepower Scania 140. Is this going to be a full pull? No, I'm afraid Noosa is not going to break the 100 metre barrier today. Let's see his distance. 87.64 for Noosa and 31-year-old Erling is going to struggle to repeat last year's third place in the Danish Championships. Starfighter is another Danish tractor with a shining 18-cylinder Curtis Wright star motor with turbo as its power source. Comes from a B-29 Super Fortress. And Soren Galsgård didn't really get off the ground with that one, did he? Only 7.75 meters. So the 40-year-old mechanic from ring copping is out of luck today. The organizers were a bit worried that everyone would go to the beach today instead of here. But they've relieved smiles now. There's an even bigger crowd than yesterday. Now here's the main man of the moment, Peter Direct and Green Spirit the Fourth. He was pulling at Lockham in Holland yesterday evening and about midnight he and his team set off for Denmark. As you can see they made it in time. And if you want to know how he got on, he was third in both the 4.4 and 5.4 tonne classes. That's Gert Jakobsen with the glasses and Torben Larsen, who'll be in action shortly with the Superstock Flintstone. Now, is Green Spirit going to lead by example? Any of the three top placings will give him the Euro Cup. Oh yes, it's so easy when you know how and have two Rolls-Royce Griffins in front of you. A full pull to the Flying Dutchman. That's his wife in the white under the umbrella. She's been promised a new bicycle if he wins today. Well, here are the others in a six-way pull-off. Desperate Dan missed the last round because it clashed with the pull in England, so he badly needs the points. And with Fox and Snoopy trying to improve their positions, it should be a cracking final. Adding extra weight to the sledge for the pull-off. This is the third year of the Euro Cup series, which is really going from strength to strength. There have been record crowds at all the rounds except Wallaby Flavour, which unfortunately seem to have the only really rainy day during the whole of the summer. Mick Hollin and Jap van der Poel of the international jury, checking that everything is OK. And then the battle can commence. So let's join our camera at the start. The reigning Euro Cup holder Fox from Denmark, who has the honour of leading the way. Peter Larsen screwing on his Chevys, giving it all he's got. This is one he wants to win, and he's going about it the right way. Our camera is still at the 96 metre mark, so that is well over the 100. It's hot out there, and that run from Fox will have made the others really sweat. 103.19 for Peter Larsen, who is not giving up his title without a fight. Modifieds in other parts of Scandinavia seldom venture outside their own countries. And here is an exception, Stellan Bartholdsen and Super Special from Sweden. Powered by three Keith Black engines. He'd have liked four, but as they cost 125,000 Swedish kroner each, he had to settle for three. And they're second hand as well. The high back spoiler means he's reversing blind, so he needs his mechanic to indicate direction and distance. That is now forward 104 metres. He comes from Anderstorp where they used to have Formula One racing. And now he's on a race against time. Can he get to the end before the sledge gets to him? And the answer is no. But a good effort from the 27-year-old truck and tractor driver. 86.63 for Super Special. Single Swedish flag in evidence, that'll be different at Herbie Arena on the 9th and 10th of September, northeast of Malmo, when Stellan will be hoping to land a European title in front of his home crowd. Well, at least he now knows what the opposition's like. And underneath that helmet and behind the mask is Kevin Whittingham. He'll be pleased to sell you a track or two. It's what he does for a living. And like Peter Direct, he has two Rolls-Royce Aero Griffins that were designed for Shackleton bombers. 
and they're coupled together as a driving force for Snoopy. He failed to get to the pull-off at Sotram and he wants to put that right today. Oh, he's sliding dangerously wide, nearly out of bounds, and the brake correction takes the rest of his speed. 92.54, over 10 metres down to Fox, but still good enough for second spot with three to pull. Oh, and just like they seem to be having problems with their rake, news has come that Green Spirit the fourth has electrical problems and can't come to the start. He won't get the points he needs, and his wife won't get her bike, but such is life. Now from a double to a single Rolls Royce Griffin and bull power from Denmark. It used to run with Taurus tyres which had a bull as a logo, hence the name Bull Power. Kurt Oostergaard is the man kicking the bull. And you know, I always think it almost looks like a bull's head with those bent exhaust stacks. And this bull's moment of truth comes just over the 85 metre mark. Kurt is 37 years old and a farmer from Skjern in Jutland and he's currently second in his class in the Danish Championships, 86.63 and that means it's fourth place with just one to run for bull power. And no wonder he looks so happy. The Belgium sledge has done a grand job over these past two days and lived up to its reputation. And this is one of Desperate Dan's boys, either learning a new dance or getting into his uniform at the last possible moment. And here is the big man, double European 3.4 and 4.4 tonne champion. But he's had mechanical problems and only managed two third places so far in this competition. Backing up and at the top is the safety ring. If the sledge were to uncouple for any reason, the safety cable will pull out and that ring will kill the tractor's electrical system, which will shut everything down and prevent an accident. Here's the only one who can prevent Fox from winning today, 40-year-old Brian Armistead. Comes from near Blackpool in the north of England. Five Chevys literally making the earth shake. But I don't think the front one's firing on all cylinders. It's still long though, on or about the 100 meter mark. Brian's used to winning. He told me he doesn't travel all over Europe to finish second and third. So he's sending his little field blowers back to the manufacturers in America for reconditioning and they should be ready for the final round in Meerkirk and the European Championships where he'll also be attempting to win both classes again for the third time. Now what about the distance? No, he's five metres short, 98.09, so Fox records his first Euro Cup win of the season and a slender chance of retaining his title. It was disaster day for Green Spirit. He only managed sixth place and that netted him just five points. So going into the final round, the points table looks like this and it's all up for grabs. Now, before we take a break, let's have a little look behind the scenes at Herning 95. After the break for more pulling action. And welcome back to Herning in Denmark for the final event today where we'll be checking out the 4.4 tonne Superstocks. But before we get on with the action, let's hear how European champion Blue Power solved a difficult problem.
Well, this spring, when uh, Neil Stamgall was preparing his tractor, he came up to us uh, with a problem. He needed some very good air filters, much better air filters. So he and his son, uh, Hans P, came up with a good proposition how we could make a deal. So uh, since he was last year was the Danish champion and the European champion, we said, why not? It sounds like a good deal. So we went along with them. A Canadian filter works totally different from a normal filter. It's a kind of electrostatic filter, while the airflow flows through the filter, the filter gets electrostatic, and the bits and pieces, they're drawn out of the, the airflow and caught by this on the surface of the filter. And because the filter works that way, you can have a filter with a very high airflow on a very small space. And with the temperatures in the 30s, there are lots of people here who'd like a high airflow around them as well. Right on with the action, and first to pull is Thomas Patterson from Sweden. And from this angle, you can see how fast he's traveling, pulling a sledge that has a gross weight of about 14 tons. Not really geared for the 4.4 ton class, dear addiction, notching 89.36 meters. The crowd enjoying themselves at this well-organized event. And once again, you can see it attracts people of all ages and they're all having a really good time. And here's the next to pull, heavy fuel with 41-year-old Christian Fries in the saddle. Heavy fuel, finding it heavy going out there. The last 10 meters were almost in slow motion. 71.32 for the farmer from Hals in southern Jutland, who is almost rushing back to the pits, hasn't even bothered to take his helmet off either. But now it's our second chance to meet Jan Falkman and Miss Fergie. He was the best Danish tractor in the 3.4s. Can he do it again now? Jan seems to be having a problem with his Massey Ferguson. He's huffing. He's puffing. And he's getting nowhere fast. And with the throttle that far down, he should be well down the track by now. No, he calls it a day. Miss Fergie is finished. Jan's a mechanic, so it won't be long before she's rolling again. You can bet your life on that. 6.16 for Miss Fergie. And that's one place I wouldn't want to work today, the hot dog stand. And they're doing a roaring trade as well. Yesterday we saw Torben Larsen. Today it's the turn of Gert Jakobsen to pilot Flintstone. I asked him why it's called Flintstone. He said, well, that's what it was called when we bought it. Gert going well, and he goes over the 80 metre mark. Currently shares the lead in the Danish Championships with Blue Power. They both have 20 points. Right, let's see the distance. 83.67 for Flintstone. If you have any questions about tractor pulling, you can write to the European Tractor Pulling Committee and you'll see their address at the end of the program. So be prepared if you're going to put pen to paper. And now it's the turn of Blue Power and 48-year-old Niels Damgård. Made a few changes overnight. He's hoping they're changes for the better. Let's see what he can do. Well, Blue Power's really rolling now. Look at this. And a fine full pull, and that will be a big boost to his confidence. That's his son Jens P in the wheelchair, who owns the tractor, and he's obviously delighted as well. Right, now before we take a look at the list of full pulls, here's the fastest superstock in Europe, Magcal Bits and Pieces. He gets those back wheels turning at 130 kilometers an hour. And he makes a full pull look so easy. So, let's see who we have in the pull-off. There are two from Finland, three from Denmark, and one each from Holland and Great Britain. No matter which class you pull in, there's always a constant search for more power to try and stay one step ahead of the opposition. You could be up one year, and then you're down the next. So, you enjoy the good times, and you work to stay there. 
and as you can see there's virtually no cooling breeze today the flags are still but there's plenty of action down at the start where Eurostar is beginning its run you've probably noticed they've changed sledges for this class this one comes from Denmark and it's just as hard as ever Jens Robeck shutting down just over the 80 meter mark let's take a look at the scoreboard 82.42 for Eurostar from Herning and 43 year old Jens tells me he's been pulling for eight years but here's another experienced Dane with three 4.4 ton Danish titles to his credit Bjarne Nielsen and Spetten like so many other drivers Bjarne is a tractor mechanic by trade but it's only in this sport that you'll find tractors with up to three turbos. The handy cams are out in force to record it for posterity. And Spetten is on its way. And this is a very useful pull from Bjarne, who's well over the 90 meter mark. And with five to pull, that means that Spetten takes the lead. 92.13 for Bjarne from Roskilde. And if that name rings a bell, it's where every year they have an enormous open air rock festival, one of, if not the largest in Europe. And now it's the first of the overseas lads, 43 year old Miko Pera and Megapower. He's an agricultural machinery salesman up there in the middle of Finland. And he tells me he's very busy these days. Well, he's busy now as well. Really pushing that throttle arm to the floor. His Valmet 8200 is eating up this track. Wow, look at this, past the 90, past the 100, maybe even past 110. That was a superb pull. And I think even Mika is mystified. He looks across to the marker posts, but they stopped a long way back. A full pull with a total distance of 111.41 meters for Mega Power and Miko Pera. And with his t-shirt over his shoulders, that's double Danish rally champion, Henrik Lungor. He drives a pretty hot Opel Calibra. Right, let's get back to the track. See what Niels Damgore and Blue Power can do. Certainly smartly away, keeping a nice straight line. And by the looks of it, it's problem free. And with that, Blue Power will move into second spot behind the Finn. 99.99 for Niels, who'll never ever get closer to a full pull than that. Acknowledging the applause of the crowd. And these girls have a special greeting. <laughs> Three to pull. And here's yesterday's Euro Cup winner, Pekka Herlevy and Delta Power. European 4.4 tonne champion in 1993, which he won here at Herning. His Valmet is better suited to the heavier class. He just loved to do the double, and the prize money would help to pay a few bills as well. And look at him go. The Finns are really flying today. Another full pull, and another amazing distance. Gonna be 111.55, 14 centimeters longer than Mega Power, and that is pulling of the highest class. And it's also somewhat of a challenge for Magkal Bits and Pieces. Willem Beldhausen checking that all is well with today's driver, 30-year-old Leonard Griffian, who, when he's not driving tractors, is a snap-on tool salesman currently leading in both their classes in Holland. Now, can they get up and mix it with the Finns today? Oh no, apparently not. Seemed a bit like gearbox problems to me. And really that just goes to show, doesn't it, that even probably the best super stock in Europe can sometimes have problems. Two fins watching from the sidelines. Hecker knows what it's like only too well with Caesar blowing up yesterday. The distance is immaterial for Willem. That's it. And now there's just one left to pull. 
a John Deere mean green machine. Here it is with Jeff Ashcroft in the saddle. A triple turboed running deer which came from America about 10 years ago and looks almost the same outside. But inside all the parts would have been changed by now. He needs 111.56 to win. Jeff urging on the deer, come on, keep going. But it's not long enough. He won't split up the two fins. 92.32, which gives him fourth place overall, third best of the foreign pullers. Niels Damgård takes first prize in the Danish part of the competition from Spedden and Eurostar. And when Pekka Herlevy can get himself together, he takes the honours in his second class of the weekend. So here's the official result. A double triumph for the Finns and Blue Power now leads in both Danish classes. So as the spectators make their way home after two days of pulling action, just a reminder of the European Championships in Sweden and where you can find out more about tractor pulling. Just drop the ETPC a line. That's it for today and this is Roger England saying enjoy your pulling, bye for now.